invisible but essential to modern living. We rely on countless panes of glass to protect us from nature. Glass is a crucial part of our urban landscape. And yet, it's so incredibly fragile. And to this day, glassmaking poses some engineering challenges that even the experts admit they still haven't solved. Glassmaking is classed as a, as a black art. And because there are parts of the process that we still don't really understand in great detail. So how do the modern-day wizards of glass manufacture do it? Welcome to Pilkington's in St Helens, England, one of the world's largest producers of flat glass. Their glass ends up in everything, from car windscreens to skyscrapers. It used to be that molten glass was squeezed between rollers to get it to size. But this left deep scratches which needed to be polished out by hand. Not anymore. Today, Pilkingtons make glass from scratch, without a scratch. And this is how they do it. It all starts at what is called the hot end of the production line, at the furnace. Here, the main ingredient is poured in, sand. Glass is more than 50% sand, and sand is so useful because of the way it melts. At a scorching 2,000 degrees centigrade, sand, or silica as they call it in the trade, turns from a solid into a liquid state. And as if by magic, when it's a liquid, the molecules separate and let light through. The problem is, when it reaches such a high temperature, it's unstable, more like molten lava. So one of the biggest challenges is finding ways to lower the melting point and stabilize the mixture. And that's what the other raw ingredients do. Soda ash, limestone and dolomite. But there's another rather surprising ingredient which must enter the furnace. And that's glass itself. Broken glass is called cullet. It's sprinkled into the sand mixture and, hey presto, this lowers the melting temperature significantly to a more stable 1600 degrees centigrade. And it's at this temperature that glass as we know it is born. But how do you turn molten glass into an even plate of flat glass? The answer is to float it on tin and that's what's being added to the furnace now. This method of making glass is called the float process and it happens inside this fiery chamber. Inside here, ingots of tin are melted into a hot bath. The surface of melted tin becomes perfectly flat and the glass settles on top of it. The reason for using tin is that it melts at a low temperature but has a very high boiling point and because it's denser than glass the two can happily share a bath without getting in each other's way. But approach with caution because to stop the glass sticking to the tin a heady mix of nitrogen and hydrogen gases is used. The glass ribbon is now flat but the hard work isn't over. These guys are about to change the width of the glass. To do this, it has to undergo a session of prodding and pulling. More grueling than a Russian massage. The top rollers can be angled, pushed and pulled, speeded up or slowed down. An increase in speed and the glass is narrowed and thinned. Six hundred tons of molten glass is continuously pushed through this furnace each day. It never stops, 24-7. Once formed, the glass needs to be cooled, but only very slowly. So, a series of cooling ovens brings it down to room temperature over a few hours. 
but here comes the jeopardy. If the glass gets cooled too quickly, disaster. It'll be too brittle and shatter. It's possible to melt many kinds of rock in white-hot ovens, but as the temperature falls, other materials crystallize and lose their transparency. But glass has a unique property. It doesn't crystallize because, incredibly, glass never becomes a solid. Glass is, is classed as a super cool liquid. That in as much as it's never completely in a stable uh, form. If you put it in your window, in 20 years time, it will be slightly thicker at the bottom than when it was installed. So the windows we look through are actually viscous. They're still technically liquid. It's possible for some liquids to remain in their runny state, even when they fall below their melting point. And that is the secret behind glass. You can see through it because it's a super-cooled liquid and because glass molecules have a disordered arrangement, letting light through. This glass is nearly done. It's been heated, cooled, recycled, stretched and washed. It now has to come face to face with the razor-sharp blade of the cutter. Automatic cutters score the glass into usable bits. Marked edges are snapped off and it's on its way to the warehouse. Thirty kilometers of glass comes off this machine every day. And there's a very real danger that all this hard work could be shattered by one hurried slip. Now all the glass is upright and together. You can see that it appears green. This is intentional and something you should be grateful for. The green is iron oxide, which has been left in the glass. This stops light rays bleaching fabric and saves your furniture. Transporting oversized panes of glass around the world is no easy task. They're carried by specialized trucks which scoop up the holding racks, lock them into place and off they go.